Hey, hey kids, you uh, you trying to get into Segment City? Well, you really shouldn't, because Segment City is a mature podcast, and listener discretion is advised. I'm just trying to look at, I know I'm in an alleyway, I know, I know how I look, but I got some fireworks for you kids. I got snakes and I got sparklers, that's all I got. Oh, don't give me that. <laughs> this is how we're starting with Pepto Bismals, brought to you by Pepto. Dude, can you get demonetized of your podcast? We're gonna get a cease and desist. I hope not. Pink does more than you think. Well, Pink does infinitely more than you think. We've been listening to this same commercial for five minutes as I was getting ready. Wait, but I have another one for you. Oh, okay. Please hold. Oh no! Wait, we'll just go. You to found the, the other the one. Song. Wait, here we go. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Hecto Max? Upset stomach diarrhea. I don't think I've hated anything this. You need Pepto Max. Can well, you... this is my way of telling you that you've arrived in Segment City and you need to use the bathroom immediately. Oh no. <laughs> it's been a long car ride. It's been a long car ride. You didn't make a rest stop. No. But you have arrived. Mm-hmm. In Segment City. In Welcome Segment to Segment City. City. I'm Wait. Theo Sapakos. You stole the the intro from me. How dare you? Just introduce yourself. I'm Will Kane. And you're listening to Segment City. And now I'm grumpy, not just this because you show... made me listen to Pepto Bismol <laughs> for like this a This is a show solid... where Will and I both prepare segments and then we come to the table and we present them to one another. This is some stolen valor. This, this is the second time we've recorded this intro and <laughs> so you a... just copied wee, me. Wee, wee. Pull me over. Because I'm a big thief boy. You're a big thief boy. That's the theme of the episode. You theme know what? Big thief boy. You're you seem so uh, into it. Why don't you just do the thing that you told me that you wanted to do in the beginning? Okay. Well, let me tell you. Well, mm-hmm. it's it's the big big three E's this week. It's they've got three of those E's. You asked me, is it okay if we date this? <laughs> is it okay if I mention E3? Yeah, well, and I said, oh, this is gonna be like way well, far out. Y- you know, it's the Elephant Entertainment Expo, and it's it's rolling through Is town. that the joke? That's, <laughs> these elephants are more entertaining than ever. They have more flops. They have more bites. They have more ram. And, Please get and, to whatever you're going to say. That's that's it. That's the whole goof. Was that the goof? <laughs> Was that it? <laughs> that's it, my dude. All right, I'm keeping it in. All right. I have other game news that yeah. I also want to tell you about that I got reminded of. Tell me. That I learned about this weekend. Sure. Theo, have you ever wanted to date Disney characters? No. Well, too bad. <laughs> all that your favorite all your favorite characters are in this new game called Disney's Twisted Wonderland. <gasps> Guess what characters you can date in this game, please. Hopefully the princesses I I'd, I'd hope. I mean like that's the most logical answer. You would think. Yeah, I I would think. Now, just list a few characters that you think would be you know, like date. Ariel and Ariel, yeah. Jasmine. I mean, you got the you got the movie right. You got one of the movies right. Um, is it is it un- now? Theo, is it the Little Mermaid? Is it the Little Mermaid or is it Aladdin? Which movie did I get right? Both. I mean, it's Disney. It's like oh, de- desert, okay, but it's not. How do I even broach this, Theo? Yep. You can date Iago. <laughs> Game I you didn't could, know I needed. You could date, but he's not just the, he's not a parrot in this. No, no, no. He is a man. What? He's an anime man. And also the is one. Is this because they did the Aladdin movie? Because I hate no, it. No, but this is, it's by the artists who did Black Butler. If you've ever seen Black Butler, like I have, Nerd. all the, all the men in that are just like, oh, they're just so handsome. Okay. This person, uh, on the left in this picture that I'm showing Theo is, guess what character that is from, Aladdin. That's gotta be Aladdin? No, oh, wait, that's Jafar, isn't it? <laughs> you got close. It's Jafar's staff. Ew, <laughs> it's Jafar's 
if it was sexual enough to begin with, you is weird staff. You can you can date Jafar staff, Iago. You can date um uh Flotsam and Jetsam, the eels from oh, Little Mermaid. Who and is asking for this? You could date They're wearing uh, fedoras? Yeah, let me no! show you a picture. They would wear fedoras. And guess who's in the middle there? Who's the gender bent version of a character? Uh is it is it the it's this, Ursula. It's Ursula. Isn't it? yeah. <laughs> it's Ursula. You so you can oh, date God. all your favorite That's Disney Flotsam characters. And <laughs> but why? <laughs> what? what? Who looked at a lot of Jafar's staff and said, "I want to bang that staff. I want that to be a man." Wait, but is it like a dating sim? Like yeah. I said, yeah, it's a dating sim. You. So what? Okay, Disney, m- my good friends, Disney. Mm-hmm. How did they just, they allow why this? Why princesses? is this like why didn't that like how if did they not allow the like not stop this? Even I mean. if you're just do like if it's dudes, that's fine. There are a lot of handsome good guys in Disney. Sure. Eat Aladdin. Turns out there's a lot of just attractive people in Disney movies already. We're but they're good. like, let's make uh, Yago a dude. You know what? And oh, I want to. Sh- it's maybe because they didn't want to sully their prime. Oh, their prime is enterprises. That it? Maybe I don't know. Is that <laughs> that's the reason? It's, it's gross enough. Theo, I'm taking up Will's dumb thought for this. Okay. That is my thought. I thought of it, and I hate it, but I love it, too. I might play it. No, don't play it. I'll give you it. a report on that show. No, don't play it. Don't play it, Will. Don't don't fund this madness. I'll, I'll don't give them your hard, hard-earned money. I kind of want to date Jafar's staff. They're He's, handsome boys. What kind of got you with boys. those, with those got me hypnotizing with those eyes. eyes. He got me. Does he have the hypnotizing eyes? Oh, I don't like know. Like the red spiral oh, I don't eyes. like that, though. Well... You know, mm. you're gonna have to learn to love it. Everybody has, everybody Wonderful. has something. Yeah, great. Yeah, it's gross. Okay. Well, do your segment because you, well, just, you just poo pooed on my twisted wonderland. <laughs> no, you poo pooed on your own twisted I did. wonderland. It's gross. For the second time this episode, yeah, they call me the big thief boy, don't they? Oh, you're. Oh, all right, what do you think? We have our first instance of segment theft. Get ready for Theo, the official Wikipedia historian. Jesus, no. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, we've welcome done other... to my segment. Oh God, okay. You have to sit there and listen to me now. I'm the big history boy. All right. Is it about ghosts at least? No. Uh, this is about spank spanking. You wish. Mm-hmm. You already had your segment about spanking. Oh, stop! <laughs> stop it. I'm going to tell you about the Australian Emu War. Okay, this is an actual thing. <laughs> this I've, is a real thing. I've, I don't know what it's about. I've heard the name. The Great Emu War. It was a nuisance wildlife management military operation in Australia in the latter part of 1932 because there were so many emus. Mm-hmm. So it was an unsuccessful... So from the Wait. period, <laughs> the unsuccessful <laughs> attempts to curb the population of emus employed soldiers armed with Lewis guns, m- machine guns. Theo, I'm going to hold. I'm going to hold you up real quick. So this war yeah. was between... People with guns. People with guns. And emus. And emus. And guess who won? And they lost. They lost. <laughs> they, lost. <laughs> they lost. They lost. They lost. It was unsuccessful? Yes, sir. Did they get routed? Like, what happened? So, it says, while a number of birds were killed, the emu population persisted and continued to cause crop dis- destruction. That was the definition of loss. Basically, the emus kept doing their thing. They just kept... They didn't shoot enough so, of them? Chapter one. Yes. The first attempt. <laughs> <laughs> On November 2nd, I'm not going to read this whole thing in an accent. Yeah, On November 2nd, the men traveled to Campion, which is a region, mm-hmm. where some 50 emus were sighted. As the birds were, uh, were out of the range of the guns, the local settlers attempted to herd the emus into an ambush, but the birds split into smaller groups and ran so that they were difficult to target. Nevertheless, the first round of firing from the machine guns was ineffective due to the range I did, and the I did, second round of gunfire was, was able to kill quote a number of birds <laughs> <laughs> not a specific number later the same day a small flock was encountered and perhaps a dozen birds were killed we're talking about this is yeah this is we're talking about skirmishes. like we're talking about like a good amount of people with guns going out and trying to kill birds and they're only to get able to get like a dozen at a time out I mean, emus are fast, right? Yeah, but they're big. They're big targets. <laughs> you could just snipe them. So, some, so, <laughs> summarizing the calls, ornithologist Dominic Cer- Servanty commented, the machine gunner's dreams of point blank fire and to ser- <laughs> serene masses of emus were soon dissipated. <laughs> they're too quick. They the emu command had evidently ordered guerrilla tactics and its unwieldy <laughs> army spoon split up into an innumerable small units that made the use of military equi- equipment uneconomic. I'm just imagining, the- like, 
Captain, what? I see eyes in the bushes. Oh no, we're surrounded. And they're just. <laughs> all these heads start popping. Yeah. Like, boom, shoot them, shoot them. And boom, they try boom, to boom, shoot boom, them all, but they can't shoot. They aren't even being attacked. No. They just can't they're shoot just enough. Watching. They're, they're just like waving their heads. <laughs> they can't shoot so enough of them. A crestfallen field force therefore withdrew from the combat area after about a month. A they month? Just, they, they just gave up? Gave up? They after gave a up. month? Y'all, you need to keep <laughs> going with this. Like that's Y'all need bird Jesus. Y'all need bird bird Jesus. You... How do you fail? They they didn't get them. They didn't get the, the emus. Keep going. Let's let's face How it. How quickly do they reproduce? Let's face it. The emus had the upper hand the whole time. They don't have hands. <laughs> they can't. <laughs> The emus knew they were coming. No, no, they no, didn't. they didn't. The they emus didn't had better... gorilla tactics. No, no they, they didn't. No, they didn't. The emus had well thought out ba- ba- battle plans. No, they, no I they mean, didn't. this is New Zealand, right? Australia, Australia. Sorry, uh, that I think of Australia. <laughs> I think of flat. Yep, like, like nowhere to hide. Nowhere to hide. Brushes yep. like yep. little rolling tumbleweeds where they just like. <laughs> Apparently oh, not so. Apparently not so. I like the <laughs> I like the idea of England just dropping off a boat of prisoners and being like, "Hey." This island full of birds that are dicks. Deal with it. <laughs> See you <laughs> later. See you, nerd. We'll give you one gun you and have... try to kill them. <laughs> Apparently, they gave them guns and ten thousand bullets to shoot the emus with, and they and the emus won. I okay. A victory in my mind indicates that they murdered all the. <laughs> Okay. Oh, yeah, exactly. Oh, I see. No, they but they defeated them morally and, and morally and, and emotionally. They won. Now I say for all emu kind that this was <laughs> a injustice. He won that moral battle. God damn it, emus! <laughs> Can't just win. We didn't. They just didn't shoot enough of them. The emus had the superior guns. No, no, they didn't. No, they didn't. <laughs> they were like. Ugh. Chapter 2, oh, the second no. attempt. <laughs> they just, okay, they kept going. After the withdrawal of the military, the emu attacks on crops continued. Farmers attacks again, a- as farmers again <laughs> asked for support, citing the hot weather that and drought that brought emus invading from farms in, in the thousands. Thousands? In the thousands! How do you not just set up a fence! <laughs> <laughs> like, they're emus, they're not, like, <laughs> geniuses. Also, if they were in the thousands, like, they really would have been able to just, like, mow these these yeah. suckers down. I wonder what an emu tastes like. I've had emu. You've I've, had emu? Oh, no, I've had ostrich. Oh. I've had ostrich. Ooh, had I would like to have that. So it anyway. says, taking to the field on the 13th of November, 1932, a military found, the military found a, de- a degree of successes. <laughs> the military. Found a the, degree of successes. We brought the tanks. <laughs> They're not in them. <laughs> but listen, the military found a degree of successes over the first two days with approximately 40 emails, emus killed out of quote, thousands. How do That's they know nothing. That? I'm just imagining a horde of emus. A, like a wave. Yes. And they can't, Hit the broad side of a barn. The broad side of an emu. emu. Oh, damn it, guys. We hired the stormtroopers to take out our emus. Damn it. Shoot. Shoot them. <laughs> Don't shoot the sky like <laughs> varmint. Yeah, yeah, varmint. <laughs> On the third day, the 15th of November proved to be far less successful, but the 2nd of December, the soldiers were killing approximately 100 emus per week, which is pretty good. Yeah, but it's That's still, still like... a lot. That's, or are they piling up the bodies? What are they doing? I don't know. Maybe they ate them. I mean, I don't know. I mean, yeah. But I mean, like, the emus were in the thousands? Like, really? There's a lot of... Do they have to kill all the emus? Or just like... The Atlantic salmon used to run wild through these rivers. <laughs> <laughs> we used to wade on the, the emus' backs. <laughs> the, <laughs> the emus would run wild when across the When I was a boy, plains. I would look across the sea and say... Emos as far as the eye could see. There were so many, and you know the sound they made. <laughs> and it was just beautiful. <laughs> I don't know I don't what know. sound an emu makes, but that's probably it. Yeah. They're like, how do you, Are they trying for headshots only? <laughs> like, is that the only thing they're doing? They were playing with extreme hard mode on. Yeah, what is yeah. it? Like, double armor for the emus. Yeah, headshots only. The body shots do nothing. <laughs> I, small aside, yep. I play Dungeons and Dragons. This should surprise nobody. I have a spell. I'm a wizard. I'm a skeleton wizard. I have a spell that I gained from a wizard that's a once a day thing, and I can summon a crab of indeterminate size. We have to roll for how big this crab is. Ooh. And we had a bunch of items that were cursed. Mm-hmm. And so our plan was to throw a crab onto the uh, the pile of items and see if it gets cursed. 
good and the idea. first thing that happens is it steps into a gauntlet that turns it into metal and it became a boss and it almost oh, kills no. all of our party members and we had, it was a hard battle it was one of the hardest battles we had a metal it, was a, crab. it was a metal crab that we made why would it turn on you i tried to reason with it <laughs> i'm trying to reason <laughs> tried with them re- so i'm just imagining some metal o- like emus just <laughs> roaming around that just we made that problem Science has gone too far. We made these beasts. We made these beasts, and then we... And now, it was a bad idea. Sorry, we meddled you. <laughs> we meddled with nature. <laughs> anyway, get back to your... Well, that was the end That was the end of our field report. Oh, okay. Is there, on, on, is there a chapter three? There's no chapter three. There's only... They just... They just a story stop. told in two parts. <laughs> they just <laughs> The Great they Emu killed War. killed a bunch, and then they stopped. And then they stopped. <laughs> they said, this is too hard. Yeah. We lost. Seems like a bad idea. This was their Vietnam. <laughs> <laughs> this was them just like, we can't win this war. We, we can't. We're getting, we're getting sabotaged from all sides. I love it. I'm glad that you, you took on the mantle of Wikipedia historian because I didn't have one this week, but I do have two new segments. Here we go. Hit me with them. Uh, my first one mm. is my book report by Will Kane. Okay. Did you read a book? I read a book. Well, I read the picture of Dorian Gray. By Oscar Wilde. Oh, God. How long is this going to be? Not very... It's not going to be that long. <laughs> okay, Hopefully. good. Hopefully. I'm like a parent in the crowd that's just like, can't wait to get out of there just, already. I w- originally wrote this to be like, this summer, I went and I read Dorian Gray. And Dorian Gray was a good book. And I read it for my... Uh, my but I didn't. I just well, got almost kind of... Just now. I just got kind <laughs> of like sassy and a little bit mad. Okay. And so it's just like me being sassy about right. this book. Let's hear your thoughts. Also, full spoilers for this like two hundred year book, old book, but nobody cares. If you weren't gonna, if you were gonna read it, you would have done it by now. People. Yeah, you would have. If you're into Dorian Gray, this is a very particular kind. Okay, for our unit on classic novels that are famous but are kind of boring when you actually read them, I read The Picture of Dorian Gray mm-hmm. by Oscar Wilde. Mm-hmm. The Picture of Dorian Gray is about a bastard man named Dorian Gray. Mm-hmm. He is the worst. <laughs> I love to hate him. He gets a portrait made of him that he wishes would grow old while he stays young. And that is exactly what happens. Wait, that sounds like a sweet gig. That, that's it, pretty cool, cause then you also, you get to see what you would have looked like when you were old, but then you don't have to get old also, to see it. It also, uh, features all of your sins. So it becomes all gross and stuff as you Wait, are understand. a bastard man, and Dorian Gray is the most bastard man of them all, so it turns very gross. Still, it's just a painting. You could put a sheet over it. That's exactly what he does. Yeah! You're getting ahead of yourself. <laughs> The picture gets all old and nasty from all of Dorian's sinful deeds. Well, Dorian goes around doing opium. Yeah, that sounds about right. But this doesn't happen until halfway through the book. Oh. I know, because my Kindle has that percentage complete thing, and I saw, and I was just like, 50, he finally was like, I think the painting changed. And I'm like, 50%? Are you kidding me? (laughs) What are you doing? What do they do for the first half of the book, you ask? Why, (laughs) sit on couches and talk for a while. Uh, and they talk about things like posh aristocratic. You got it, buddy. I'm going to redo this. Why sit on couches and say witty things to each other in posh aristocratic houses in grimy 1800s London, of course. This is an era of books that I like to call a bunch of aristocratic assholes sit around talking to each other about how they are all assholes because they're the, they're the worst. That's the life. I love a day in the life of an asshole. And you smoke a cigar and put it out in the baby's face. That's what they do. No, <laughs> they <laughs> Wait, might as well. I didn't. I didn't read this book. I'm getting all the details right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and boy, do they sit and talk. Uh, the most cityest and the most talkiest character is Lord Henry, but we're, we're we'll get to him. The cityest. He's the cityest and the talkiest. The book starts with a painter named Basil who is chilling with Lord Henry when his beautiful bay Dorian Gray comes in. Bay Dorian Gray. I always laugh whenever people say, back in the day, men were men, and there were no, none of the gays. There were no <laughs> gays, because this this book takes place back in the gay day, and boy, oh boy, do Basil and Lord Henry stroke their dicks to the sight of <laughs> Dorian Gray. Eesh. They were either very casual with calling other men the most beautiful thing I've ever seen, uh, everyone was just more gay, or Dorian Gray is the most fuckable character in literature. Hey, you know what? If that's what they're into, I got no problem. He's just beautiful. Like, everyone is just like, he's just be- he's they just see a- him and they're just like, he's an angel. He's a beautiful boy. And 
Basil, who's a painter, in a I, good in a good boy. I don't like the name Basil. It makes me Basil it makes me really uncomfortable. Basil it's loves pronounced... him. He's like he's my mule. It's it's basil, and it pairs nicely with lemonade. Basil tells Lord Henry not to corrupt Dorian uh, with his hedonistic worldview. Hedonistic. So of course, Lord Henry immediately corrupts Dorian with <laughs> See, like literally <laughs> not even five minutes. After that conversation, it starts with them just talking, and then he's like, so Dorian Gray's coming over, and he's just like the f- Oh, God. He's so beautiful. I'm gonna paint him. Don't corrupt him! Oh. And he goes, I won't. And then he's like, you wanna Wait, come but isn't Dorian Gray also kind of a douche? Oh, he's a mega douche. But he kind of gets corrupted by- d- He learns about hedonism. Do you know what hedon- hedonism yeah, like is? self-pleasure, whatever. Yeah, fell- like, do whatever you want. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Basil paints the titular picture of Dorian. Dorian wishes upon a star to stay young and fuckable forever. And <laughs> voila, we got a story. Oh wait, Ooh. there's only that was only twenty percent of the book. No, so we're gonna start sitting and talking. <laughs> Dorian falls in love with an actress in a shitty Shakespeare company and goes to her shows every night. Basil and Lord Henry join him one night, and that night she sucks balls at acting. Dorian goes backstage and she tells him that she was acting bad because of her love for him for some reason. That doesn't it track. Makes, it doesn't track at all, even in the book. Like, she just goes, I'm, cause I learned what real love is and this is fake. And then Dorian tells her to fuck off and hmm. doesn't want to see her again. So she kills herself. Well, which at first I was on her side and then I was like, girl, this is on you now. Yeah. You should, like, I know you're, you went overboard with this. I know yeah. you're a Shakespeare actor, but still. Dorian feels bad about this for, like, the hottest second in the world, and then Lord Henry comes over and tells him to come clubbing, please. <laughs> the clubbeth await. And that's the first time that he sees the portrait change, because it has a smirk of, like, mm, I made her kill herself. And he's like, I feel a little bit bad about this, but not that bad. And then he goes clubbing. Uh, thank God we actually got to the plot at this point. Wait, what do you think an 18th century club is like? Oh, they, it's just a dinner club. They just sit. And in that's, the that's posh cushions. And I was hoping for like philosophy. a steampunk rave. <laughs> <laughs> simply wonderful. Is this that... party is simply fantastic. Is that the Prime Minister? Oh, he's took his shirt off. Wait till I tell the governor's wife. He's a he's <laughs> in a southern bar. I don't know. Worlds are colliding. It's steampunk. No rules. So I want to return to Lord Henry. Lord Henry is a wonderful caricature of a person I will call the unproductive philosopher. A character who talks a lot and has a lot of dangerous notions. Uh, but doesn't actually contribute to society. Dangerous notions. <laughs> Eating a whole roll of Oreos. So, <laughs> that's a dangerous <laughs> notion. Everyone is just like, ooh, what dangerous things you talk about. Because he's just like, yeah, just like, fuck bitches whenever you want, am I right? You he's run like, with scissors. What a dangerous oh, what a da- notion. He's dangerously handsome. <laughs> oh. Uh, he speaks of the ills of society while never doing anything about him because he's a uh, jerk. He just complains at parties. It sounds like he's an internet comment section boy with before the internet existed. People who think that Tyler Durden from Fight Club is cool might find him unironically, like, cool. Mm-hmm. But he's just, like, a parasite. He's the worst. He's the worst. Anyway, back to the story. There is a 30-year time jump. Oh. Or 20-year. I think it's 20-year. But he hasn't aged. He hasn't aged. Yes, it's that out of the blue. It's, like, it's <laughs> as out of the blue. It's, like, they hard cut and they just say, 20 years later. We're told that Dorian Gray has been a no good, terrible, nasty boy and has been breaking hearts and smoking opium. In the book, there's a picture of a character's, uh, in a book that has a picture of a character's sins, there's a surprising amount of tell, not show, Hmm. where they just tell you that he's been bad. They don't show you he's (laughs) been bad. Dorian has been a very bad boy. Uh, Dorian breaks down to Basil and shows him the painting before Basil is supposed to go to Paris. Basil tells Dorian to repent to God, and this makes Dorian so mad that he stabs Basil to death. <laughs> Wait, what? There are men who can't take constructive criticism, and then there's Dorian Gray. Yep. <laughs> Where he, and then he just, he's like, oh no, I need to hide the body, so he blackmails a chemist friend to dispose of the body. He then decides to smoke some sweet opium to relax after this very stressful murder, and only, uh, of the, the murder of the only nice character in the book. Everybody else are bastards. Yikes. He goes to an opium den and is confronted by the brother of the actress who killed herself because of uh, Dorian. Because somebody calls Dorian uh, Prince Charming, which is was her nickname for him. 
uh, once he's confronted, Dorian bamboozles the man by saying, I can't be that guy. I look how young I am. I'm just so, I'm like 18, dude. That was 20 years ago. What are you doing? But then somebody tells the brother, no, he just looks like that all the time. <laughs> Maybe it's the o- opium that keeps him young. It's ageless Keanu. So the hunt is on. And then the hunt ends. <laughs> <laughs> when Dorian is in the countryside hunting with friends and somebody actually shoots, accidentally shoots the guy while he's hiding in a bush. Oh, neat. So he's dead. It's a real good Dick Cheney moment we got there. You think it's going to be his past coming to get him, literally. And then he's just like, no, he's dead. I'm good. And so to celebrate, he goes home and stabs the painting, which ends up killing him. Yikes. And then he, be- the magic, because of magic and symbolism. Mm. And then the moral of, of the story is hedonism is bad. Be a good boy like Basil and get stabbed by hedonists. <laughs> the end. Be a good boy and get stabbed is a pretty good life lesson. Yes, that was my review of Dorian Gray. It was alright. It was alright. <laughs> it was alright. I read it on, on the train and I thought it was, I'm trying to do a thing where it was good I read, enough to keep reading. Yeah, it was, it, I mean, it, I enjoyed it more than those other books, like A Pride and Prejudice, where it's like, Oh, Lord, whatever, you're so scandalous. Oh, but you're such a bastard. What should I do with you? I thought it was going to be, like, better, because everyone references it as, like, a cool piece of supernatural fiction, but it's like... There's only one supernatural element. Doesn't It's not very yeah, supernatural. And it's not very, yeah, and it's, it's a little heavy-handed with the moral of them. Anyway, hmm. would you like to do a segment? Sure. On the opposite side of the culture spectrum, Mm -hmm. from the other side of the tracks, I bring you the worst Transformers. (laughs) Oh, yes. Is this a top ten? I don't know if it's strictly ten. It's it's several. I don't know. All right. You didn't didn't count them. I didn't count them. I did several. I Yeah. (laughs) Okay. Coming in at the bottom of the honorable mentions, we're going from, like, relatively okay to, like, Really pretty, pretty terrible. Okay, let's go for it. So, relatively okay is horrible. <laughs> H-O-R-R-I. Wait, that's okay? Dash B-U-L-L. He's an Autobot, isn't he? No, he's, there's, I think they're all Decepticons. They're just... <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna be called horrible, and oh, you're going oh. to be called dummy, and you're going to be called garbage. So, horrible is, is known for being a bully. Oh. And for being, for smelling really bad. <laughs> They should have called him garbage. They <laughs> should have called him literal garbo. So it's not that he's stupid and he doesn't bathe himself. He takes pride in smelling bad. Oh. Yeah. Which is like a Wait, weird... Wait. Hold the phone. He's a robot. How do robots smell bad? I have yes, two questions about it, too. This is one of the things for me. How do you smell bad as a robot? Yeah. And second, do the other robots have noses? Do they smell... I think they physically have noses. Also, if you're a robot Why? and you're smelling something bad, can't you just, like, disconnect your nose circuit? Do they... Okay, is the, <laughs> I, I presume there's a line of, like, horrible, you smell horrible. Yes. Because it was a lame 70s... it was a cartoon, yes. It was... Yes. All right, that's it. <laughs> Go on, move on. So, just to finish it off, he was in a gang with two others called Fangry. Oh, I hate when you're just so fangry. And brace yourself for it. Squeeze play. Mama's got to squeeze Fox Dad. He never sleeps at night. Mama's got to squeeze. Squeeze. Repeat the name. Squeeze play. Squeeze play. Yeah, it's not great. What the fuck does he transform into? Please Ooh, okay. say an accordion. We're going to look up squeeze play one no. more time. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Safe search is on. Safe, <laughs> Safe search is in the, the firm on position. That's 100% a thing. Squeeze play? People are transforming squeeze play. Oh god. No, that's a bad. You're gonna get like rule 34 of that. So he's not even that bad. Squeeze play is just like a dude who's really into destruction and, and like sabotage that's and- That's a weird name though. Call him Rampage. Like call him anything. Yeah, what was- I mean, that's just a timelessly nasty squeeze thing play? to say. Ugh. Yikes. So, anyway, squeeze play. Maybe squeeze play should be an honorable mention. Just for his name. He's a real bad boy. Yeah, that I feel like he's better than horrible. Squeeze play? Yeah. Horrible is at least like <laughs> stupid, but it's not like out of left field. Like squeeze play. Squeeze play. Next up is Huffer. Oh. And he 
is bad because he huffs and puffs and is whiny and pessimistic always. He huffs paint. He, and he just goes <laughs> high and just goes out. And oh, he's high, but he's, he's just a mean high. He's like, just, you want to fight me? <laughs> you, I can take all of you right Optimus, now. Get out of here. <laughs> get out. You go. think you're so tough. Megatron won't say that I'm a zombie. Huffer is whiny and pessimistic, but he's that dude at your job who they keep him around because he's really good at his job. He Apparently, huffs and puffs real good. He's a no. He's a great engineer. <laughs> Where did he get his? He got his degree at MIT, of course. Yeah, the old he, Huffer. Yeah, What's he, he, he will Welcome whine the Fred. whole time you make him work, but he does a really good job. Which is really weird. Like, you have to put up with this shit. But I like, relate to that. Yeah. You have to put up with this shit, but at the end of the day, you're getting a good product. you a good, a nice... <laughs> you're getting your money's worth. Where do they get all these new ones? They just keep making them. They make them? Wait, do you make Transformers? I don't know where they come from. They come from a metal plant. The All Spark! The All Spark! They come from, um, um... What's the name of the planet? Cybertron? Cybertron! <laughs> They come from Cybertron, which is a big old Transformer, I think. Right. It's like if the Earth was made of human flesh. <laughs> and then you just were walking around on it and you're like, I can I can plug into this. Is the gingerbread man in the gingerbread house, is he made of his house or is the house made of his flesh? What if he gets hungry? Does he just take a big old bite of himself or does he take a bite of his house? That's you could apply that question to you as well. <laughs> oh no! You could, oh no! You could absolutely. Eat I'm your own just fingers. me. Oh, okay. Uh, you know what? Aren't me. The next transformer yeah. you go. <laughs> you just want to speed that along because we get off of this meat topic. Yeah, I don't like that. <laughs> next up is Weird Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite Michael J. Fox movie. Yeah. (laughs) Weird wolf. He's not a regular wolf. He's a weird wolf. He's a weird wolf. He's between two weird wolves. Wait, okay. Let me... (laughs) One second. Does he transform into a wolf at least? It's the Transformers erotica novel you've been waiting for. (laughs) Between two 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 weird weird wolves. wolves. (laughs) My name's Carl, and (laughs) I'm a werewolf. Weird wolf. Is he just weird? He's a weird boy. So, he's known... He has, um, he, so he, he talks to himself a lot and he also like speaks with really poor grammar, which makes me question if it's okay to like be making fun of him. Oh yeah. So oh. he's from Wikipedia. It says his name's Weird Wolf. Those other Decepticons are the worst. <laughs> the worst, right? Like I don't know if you should be on this list because we maybe we should just feel bad for Weird Wolf. He didn't name yeah, himself that. I don't know if I like the energy that. <laughs> so from Wikipedia. To make matters worf- worse, he doesn't talk to himself very well when he does it. He says something, to talk in strange backwards speak few can make sense of, but himself he likes. Yeah. Is something he might say. Okay. Yeah, he's just a weird guy. He's just a weird guy. But I feel like he just, he needs to maybe see a mental health specialist. I don't know. They don't have those for, you're just at war constantly. Wait a minute. Yeah. You're telling me that not a single no. Decepticon or Autobot has ever had PTSD and need to see a therapist about no. it? No. Therapist bot? What seems to be the problem here? <laughs> I've just been killing Decepticons for my entire for life. For non-stop, it seems like our whole plot line, re- my whole life is a plot line revolving around killing. People ask me, Optimus, what do we do? And I, this thing. <laughs> Why do we even bother, though? Why can't my hand transform into a flower? <laughs> I can transform my body, but I can't transform my state of mind. <laughs> I can't seem to transform my emotions <laughs> into something happier. A happier time. I look at my auto wife and I <laughs> look at my auto children and I just <laughs> and I say, "Where did they come from? Where did they, they just showed up one day? Did they? How do we reproduce? Do I poop out <laughs> a little mad fox car? What is gender? Why am I? Why am I married to? What does it mean to be gender when you're a robot?" You, I hate when my USB dick goes, <laughs> you gotta flip it around. I have to try it three or four times. <laughs> and, at, <laughs> and at that point, my wife is making fun of me. And it's just not good. Don't you hate it when you, <laughs> your wife makes fun of you? <laughs> For having a USB dick. <laughs> oh, no. Which way? Yet. Which way? <laughs> I wish my, they would upgrade us to USB C so this wouldn't happen. <laughs> my ex could get it in the first time. <laughs> You always bring up <laughs> Coitus Bot. <laughs> Coital Bot. 
I can't believe you dated Megatron. <laughs> you should have heard how he star screamed when he... I was his Megathog. Oh god. Okay, we're <laughs> next next. We're on to Reflector, who is actually three bad. small robots oh. named Viewfinder, Spyglass, and Spectro. Now, from these, these are... three, can you guess what they turn into? Just like a bunch of glass? Like they like combine to form something. A a big a big glasses. A big mirror. <laughs> a big glass. <laughs> a big mirror. Megatron, quick, put us on. You're not shooting straight. Okay, You're shooting at our own see. army. <laughs> a big mirror. Megatron's just like, fuck, I just look great. Megatron's like, where the fuck are my glasses? <laughs> oh. <laughs> like, rolls Transform like into them. <laughs> they ran away again. <laughs> they can't see bastard. anything. Why are they goofy? I feel like that's... Are they just okay. in one big trench coat? So they combine to form a camera. A normal size camera. I'm gonna get you! They're apparently good at spying. Wait, <laughs> a normal like a person camera? Yeah, like a normal person. Not just like a big gun like Megatron No, does? a camera. What's the point of them? They're apparently good at spying and blackmailing, even though blackmailing. Uh, even though they're robots and they're supposed to be scary and tough and be able to shoot lasers. We saw you with Coitus bot the other day. <laughs> Maybe you want to give us some nuts and bolts? <laughs> hey, you think you're some hot shit, but we saw hey, some we're pictures gonna need a little of you. scratch. We got some of these uh, these USB not going in quite right for yeah, us. Yeah, you know, sometimes you got a small USB and you, uh, <laughs> you wouldn't want that getting out, you know. Yeah, what yeah. would the wife and the auto kids think? Now I could sell you this adapter if you wanted, but yeah, it's going to cost awesome. you a pretty penny. You know, we got these glasses for you. They're pretty big. <laughs> <laughs> me and my boys are going to rough yeah. you up. You guys are tiny. You can't rough me up at all. What are you going to do? All right. All right. <laughs> okay. Don't get it. Okay. Don't get antsy. Let's, we have to, they have to combine into it, too. Into a camera. <laughs> they're, they're just microscopic. From what Wikipedia says, they exist to observe everything from scenery to wildlife to we architecture. Are. We are the watchers on the wall. <laughs> and we watch. And we just watch But only you. when we combine to watch. We can't watch on our own. Yes, of course. The, that, that's Reflector. That's, they that's Reflector. Pretty, they seem pretty dumb. What's the name? Why Reflector? You I reflect on your actions after you take a picture of you. <laughs> they show you a picture and they're like, think about what you've done. <laughs> <laughs> we know. We want we you could, to know that we and know. We know and we could reference you to Therapy Bot. You may need it. So what do you think about your USB? <laughs> Is it... You spend a lot of time thinking about your USB, don't you? I don't understand why it's a problem. I mean, I get mine in the first time every time. Is that true? Are you you can you can be honest with me here. You can be. Hey, this is a safe. This auto is a space. safe so, auto space. <laughs> this, <laughs> this, this is a safe auto zone. This is. A auto zone. <laughs> <laughs> we got all these parts in here. Don't just wait. That would be like it being in a butcher shop. That would be like a, like getting a lobotomy. Oh, oh my god, the mufflers. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> No, no, not the, not the fuel rod. No, oh, no, they have it everywhere. There's, there's oil everywhere. There's oil. What did you do? PTSD. Just lie down on the couch. It's going to be fine. Do they repair each other? What if the couch was an Autobot and it was? They <laughs> <laughs> transform into Man, that fucked up shit you're talking about. Wait, what? Anyway, I I was alone. <laughs> anyway, well, there was me and Reflectors also here. They're just here to look. They're just oh, They're love just looking and stuff. Fun. All right, next up we got Rat Bat, which doesn't sound like a rat transformer. Bat. It sounds. Is he a rat that transforms into rat a bat? bat? Sounds like an orc name. Rat Bat. Rat Bat. What do you want me to do, Starscream? <laughs> Come on then, yeah, you. Looks like reflectors <laughs> stuck on the menu, boys. <laughs> 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 so Rat Bat. Is a uh, big mechanical bat, unsurprisingly. Batman's really good. <laughs> Use it as a buddy wisely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it turns out the uh, bat plane is actually just rat bat. <laughs> <Whoa>. <laughs> Alfred, give me rat bat. What are you doing on my back? <laughs> no, I'm just envisioning like bat. a giant, like, <laughs> flying, <laughs> flying orc. Like, His arms Here out. comes rat bat. <laughs> <laughs> Ranger! <laughs> ranger! Hold on, Batman, I've got to go kill this ranger. Blindswalker! Blindswalker! 
So he's his, he, oh, uh, <laughs> we've been speaking with the wrong accent. Apparently, Ratbat has a Dracula accent. Blee, blee, it's me, <laughs> Ratbat. I'm going to suck your oil. Blee. Ooh, Ooh. looks <laughs> like man flesh is back on the menu. <laughs> Ooh, man flesh. Or it could be uh, an orc trying to do an impression of Dracula. <laughs> It's <laughs> time! What is this? I hate that. Ratbat is here. <laughs> Looks like... <laughs> I can't. Oil's back on the menu, <laughs> Is boys. it a transformer? Is it an orc or is it a dragon? Oh! <laughs> mm, <laughs> no, it's Yoda! Not Yoda! Mm. So, he had an evil plan to open a car wash <laughs> and lure in people and... <laughs> <laughs> and brainwash them <laughs> with flashing lights. <laughs> Who's looking up when they're gonna get car wash? I don't know. I thought this was gonna be a trick for the Autobots. He's Walter Whiting over here. He's an evil plan of the car that wash. That would be like if, like if an, or let's go with the orc, for, or like any villain was just like, hey, Autobots. You want a shower? <laughs> like, oh. Yeah. You know what? Like, like, you know, I. You know what, rat bag? You, Matt, like a, I'm you hor- seem I'm horrible. I, I'm known for smelling bad. Maybe maybe I'll clean up my act. Got you. <laughs> oh! You're in my trap now. I knew I shouldn't have showered. <laughs> oh, the one time. The one time I was trying to turn over a new leaf. A new bar of soap. A new bar of soap. And you finally, just, that, was a, that was a dumb plan. Anyway, on our list, yeah, <laughs> we have mind wipe. He who forgets is, everything he's, every time. <laughs> he's obsessed with hypnotism and wants to commune with the dead. What? So he builds himself a device to commute with commune with dead uh with the de- dead transformers. You just plug in a device. But instead of picking up their frequencies, it picks up the frequencies of Earth sitcoms. So he's just like <laughs> Which he comes to like. So he's like in the middle of our war and he's like, you know what? I get a little so <laughs> wait. Yeah, he's doing a seance bow, 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 and he's bow, bow, just like <laughs> Oh Ross <laughs> You, Jerry, 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 I found a new car, Jerry, I'm gonna buy this new car. <laughs> I hope it's me. <laughs> George, you can't buy a new car, you don't have a job. <laughs> hey, Jerry. <laughs> hey, hey, Jerry. <laughs> so I met this new man, and he's a big robot. <laughs> <laughs> What's the deal with big Transformers? What's the deal? <laughs> okay, the, the, Biggest crossover in history, Transformers with Seinfeld. Hey, it's me, Ratbird. <laughs> hey, Jerry. <laughs> he watches in his window. <laughs> Kramer, not now. <laughs> Kramer bot. Kramer bot. <laughs> he just transforms. <laughs> what would he transform into? <laughs> A sandwich that he makes. <laughs> he's, got, he's got like wiry hair that goes like straight up out of his head. <laughs> What's the deal when you go to AutoZone and they don't have the right branches? Not this oil, Jerry. You never get the good get oil. <laughs> <laughs> Reflector saw, took a picture of me and I just don't know what to do. Oh no. Or their wacky hijinks. He saw me in a picture so wait, with a different girl, and so now he, I'm in a big pickle. He wanted to talk to dead Autobots, or like robots, right. Transformers. Yes, correct. And he holds seances with just like, Starscream, take my hand, and we'll be, <laughs> oh yes. The needle is moving. Oh, Monica. <laughs> <You're> so- <laughs> Are you getting a signal from Monica Bot? Mm, Monica Bot. <laughs> Rachel Bot is really... <laughs> wait, who's Rachel Bot? Mm. <laughs> My favorite bot is Joey. How you doing, huh? Wait, seance. I'm saying you don't need me to robots. be here. You're just watching TV. Mm. <laughs> oh, Fraser, you're so erudite. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a war to fight here. Wake the fuck up. <laughs> Sick of Transformers. So he's actually very powerful. Oh, okay. Because he can he can mind wipe people. He can make them like get hypnotized. But he often I'm so sad because I already <laughs> watched all of Seinfeld. Wait! I can mind wipe! I can't What wait. is the show? <laughs> what is the show? I'll give it a shot. I'll give it a shot, maybe. So he's very powerful, but he often forgets he has abilities and he runs away from battle. <laughs> <laughs> what a dummy. 
He's just like, oh. So he loves watching TV and he hates confrontation. It sounds a lot like me and you. Yeah, is that, yeah, okay. That's, <laughs> except I don't have the mind powers. Wipe, mind wipe, very relatable uh, Transformer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, Michael, you, you're <laughs> such a bad manager. <laughs> you are not good at relating to other people, are you, Michael? Unlike me. <laughs> I have mastered human to human interaction. Hey, want to fight? Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> if only we could end the show on that. That would have been great. <laughs> that so, concludes yeah. the worst of the Transformers. That was wonderful. Brought Thank you. you. On a journey through. Uh, I think that'll bring us to the end of our program, Theo. What those. We'll have to. Tra- we're transforming into our <gasps> outro now. Whoa! <laughs> uh, if you have any questions or any segments that you want to put in, you sounded like a uh, wacky pilot there for a second. Ooh. You're like, uh, this is your pilot, pilot speaking. <laughs> <laughs> this is your captain speaking, and we're getting a little bit of turbulence as we. Tell you that you can email <laughs> us at segment city podcast. Is, is that the at bat plane? Gmail. Oh, it's it's bat rapper. <laughs> you can email us at segment city podcast if you have any great segments that you want to put in, or you can hit us up on Twitter at segment city and send us maybe some transformers that we might not have mentioned on the show. Yeah, if you have your, any your good top tens, any favorite. segments, yeah. we will, or any just like nice things you want to say about the show. Thanks, thanks for listening in. It's We're been... not ending it there. We got to do a thank you. Ba-da-da-da. No. No, we can't do it yet. No, we can't. Cut that wait. out because we'll do it at the end. Yes, That'll be good. I, we're cutting all this out because there's an awkward silence. Yeah. Me just a wiggling my eyebrows at you. We'd like to s- give a special thank you out to Rachel Robinson. Thank you, Rachel, for the use of our theme song. She's great. She has a podcast called Create Loud. Go check it out. And thank you also, listeners, for listening in to Segment City. And now we must depart. I need to go stab my picture <laughs> and die because of it. Do they ever end with a refreshing? I don't know. All right, bye. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs>